Greetings students, today we are going to learn how we can install and set up a Postgres SQL for a development environment. For this, I am using the blog of Study Gyan. The first thing that we need to do is install the Windows version of Postgres. Here, I will go to the installers and choose an appropriate version for me. We can use the 13 beta version, but for now I will use the 12.4 version itself. And since I'm using a 64 bit system, I will be using it. As soon as the download begins, we have to understand that to manipulate PostgreSQL database, we will also need another UI, which will be PG admin. To install it, I am going to its download page, choose the platform and then install whatever version I require. Soon you will see a download window at the bottom. So I will restart the video when the downloads are complete. As we can see, both the setups for PG Admin and Postgres are complete. So the next thing that we need to do is double click on the Postgres icon. Right now you might be viewing a black screen, but in reality, it is only your system asking you if it can make changes. Just click yes to open the Postgres installer. As soon as the installer is starting up, you will see this window that will ask you to set up. Let's just click next. Right now I will choose an installation directory. You can choose any directory of your choosing but for now I will keep everything at default. We will need all these packages so don't deselect any and then click next. For data directory I am I am also using the default folder. Just make any password that you will remember because you will need it when you are accessing your database. Now click next. The default port number for Postgres is 5432 but you can choose any port that is available on your system but I am keeping this at default as well. This is an advanced setting you may you may want to change it in future if you are bringing your database into a server but for now I will keep it at local. This is a pre-installation summary and everything looks good to me. So let's just install. Now the installation has begun. This may take a, this may take a few minutes according to your system speed. So I will simply pause the video here and come back to you when the download is complete. The following window will appear as soon as the installation process is complete. You may want to install a few drivers but right now we don't need any so I'll just deselect it and click finish. And with that we have installed Postgres on your system. But how can we access it? To do that we will need another software that we call PG Admin. For installing it we'll simply double click on the setup to open the window. Now the system is asking me if this software can make any changes in our system. So I'll simply click yes. This will open the following window. Now we, let's just click next. Accept the agreements. Click next. And then simply install. As soon as the installation completes we will see another window. So I'll just meet you there. As soon as the installation process is complete, you will see the following window. We can launch, launch PG admin using this window, but you may want to launch it later yourself. So I'll just deselect it and click finish. If you wish to open PG admin, all you need to do is press the windows button, go to the start menu and click on PG admin version 4. PG admin by default opens in our default browser. For in my case, it is Chrome. Even someone without any knowledge in coding can manipulate this. When 
you launch the PG Admin window, you can see the following window opening in the browser. Here, simply enter the password you previously added to log into your account. Right now, you can see several data servers already here because I have already made some work on PG Admin. However, you most probably will only see this servers. Next, you can open Postgres SQL to view the databases. Here, all the data is shared in these schemas in the form of these tables. That will be all for now. In the next section, we will learn how we can connect this database to a Django app.